Hi, I'm Toby Hodges. This is the first new Contest 49 CS. And we've taken it out from Den Helder. That's Texel, very Dutch conditions. Um, we've got some waves, we've got plenty of wind. We've got 20 knots at least apparent going with us and that equals over 30 going into the breeze. So we've reefed the boat a bit now and uh, we've got two days on board. So it's a good chance to really get under the skin of this really good looking new Udall Volik design. appreciate pretty gnarly conditions really we've got around 30 knots coming over the deck really short sharp sea but a couple of things to point out here one this is a single rudder boat but sail plans about balance for these conditions a little bit of weather helm on here it's nice still got good control of the boat but also look how nice and dry that deep cockpit is for the guests as well Sailing's done around this area. Yeah, we're, uh, we're one gunnel in, but it's good fun sailing and know, knowing that it can take these conditions quite well. Day two, just leaving Texel, nice protected little harbour in there, bit of a deja vu, same grey, same colour water, looks like there's about the same amount of wind, let's see what we can get. Backstay still on Fran? Um, the thing that I wanted to point out is there's no noise. It's stiff. The structure, there's nothing moving. It's, uh, it's quite impressive. And then as we go further aft in the boat, if you can follow me, you'll, you'll see it's, it's the same. That, you know, here's the mast base. No noise, We're right on the main bulkhead here. No creaking, no movement. Obviously, once you're into the saloon, great natural light in these views here. Yeah, we're at heel, and yes, you've got to get up two steps um, to get into the saloon. But there's your friend there, as long as you can reach that. Solid grab rails here, here, and at, at the companionway. So it's, you know, it's sturdy enough getting around here, certainly on this tack. And then same thing in the galley with, a, with the passageway style galley like this, you're braced. If you need to, you've got at the sink here, you can clip onto this bar. Yeah, it's belt and braces stuff. So we are continuing to plow on here at eight to eight and a half knots with a steady 30 knots over the deck. The waves have calmed down a bit, but it's handling it with real ease, really, cutting through the waves. Good displacement, carries this way well. Nice motion on here. We're quite well healed, but I've got solid foot chop here and it's easy to depower the boat if you need to and that's thanks really to having the winches to hand where you need them. The primary winch is right here and obviously the main sheet winch between the two helm pedestals. It's quite, it inspires confidence to be able to, to 
trim and detune when you need to. You're steering from further outboard, you've got good visibility, works well. It's a wonderfully Dutch scene here. We've pulled into this harbour in, in Texel, the island off Den Helder. We're moored up next to this ex muscle boat here. Got a windmill. And anyway, good chance to go over the deck in the interior as well uh, before we stay here for the night. So just losing the light now. So starting up at the foredeck, what you see, yeah, conventional recipe now. So a fairly plumb stand, big integrated, long chunky bowsprit there. Why? Because it gives you the extra options. So the extra sail options in that you have the tack for a Jenica there forward, you have the tack for a Code Zero. It could be an integrated Code Zero furler in there because you have all that structure as well. And of course, the offset anchor roller uh, in this um, bow roller itself. And then recessed Genoa furler, powered windlass, nice chunky pulpit area. And you see the fixed um, raised cleats there. And then a staysail pad eye further aft if you were going for a stay cell option that's right on the waterproof bulkhead and now i lift uh, the hatch here for the sail locker which again is a good size so that is let me just come out of the wind a bit it's gusty still here so this is three quarter height so my head is just popping out of here three quarter height sail locker plenty spacious enough for this helix north sails furling jenica to live in here and then you see a sort of quarter height bulkhead there into the the chain locker with the stem further forward in there and that's a yeah fully watertight composite bulkhead smacks of quality finish through this boat really does so this has s-tech composite decking on it and you can see from this angle just how how flush this this deck is and it's one level all the way here from the bow all the way aft uh, flush hatches open each way for ventilation into that forward cabin and then you might be able to notice there's a slight um, sort of five centimeter height tow rail that's built into this composite deck as well with the stanchions further outboard and then moving aft, you see nice long inboard Genoa track rails for this 105%, um, maybe slightly larger than that Genoa. And with the car pullers led aft on there as well. This has a three spreader aluminium Selden in-mast rig, fractional rig. You see the uh, Genoa pole on the forward end of the mast here. And then you have the halyards running rigging here on the mast as well. So you don't need to take those aft to the cockpit, the dead ended as well. So uh, yeah, keeps it nice and clean. It means you've just got the, the main Genoa sheets uh, around the cockpit itself or well, aft of the cockpit. There is the option to do that. We have, we saw that on, on earlier models with contest. And if you want to have that in boom furling stack pack or something with coach roof, winches they will lead that th through the deck head so they can do that on this this one yeah in mast setup which is not standard but it's what most owners go for and um, a nice flat coach roof area here as well uh, for solar panels there's plenty of options for large solar panels to go on this area here as well short handrail moving aft nice high guard rails and you'll, you'll see from the interior the amount of natural light you get from these coach roof windows. This I like because it gives you a step up into the cockpit area um, and that's an optional winch each side for um, spinnaker, genica, whatever you, extra sheeting you want. I mean, we've got the, the um, Genoa car pullers set up on this one so you can adjust those as it is, but yeah. These primary winches are for the Genoa sheets really because your main sheet is on a central plinth. 
you see how this combing line is extended all the way aft so it not only gives protection to that it also gives a seat as such to the helmsman um, there is an option for a proper helm seat as well and then move it you obviously come from the side deck you have that clear run and then you can come round this combing to this massive aft deck here the owner of this first boat puts big bean bags here reason that you've got a big set of tender garage below this aft deck area uh, and you'll see from inside there's beam enough here for two double cabins below us so that tender garage means you get a 2.8 meter rib below here with this central access to it plus these nice quarter lockers which i really like because you get a good bit of um, line hose bosun stowage each side uh, which i think we'll find really useful because you can you've got the sail locker and you've got this access here to throw fenders into here so i'll open up the tender garage and this lid now so on the 50 cs which has the aft master cabin there is a uh, this is a swim platform that lifts down but there's a window in the back of it so you'll see from the mast cabin there's a lot big window there to look straight out on that view so there's your swim platform massive and then obviously with that lifted up tender in there you can dump all your fenders in there or whatnot as well so you really can extend your boat here with that down that's a big old swim platform there you see room for thwart ships a b that's a aluminium hulled rib and then the big pistons here for the uh, for the rams for this swim platform and i will try and there's a shower there as well i'll try and turn the light on to see a bit further forward into the steering gear each side twin helms to a single rudder so this is a jeffer system with tubes go connecting to rod to the quadrant so they're independent which means if you lose one you still got the other essentially uh, and so they come through behind this casing there and linked to it's obviously a watertight bulkhead there each side sorry in watertight bulkhead forward to the accommodation And there's the starboard quarter locker there. You see the little line tidies there, just putting your hanging your warps up. You've got your winch handles in there as well. Neatly done. And those lift pull push pit seats work well as well because it means you can get into there and obviously when you're trying to access the fair leads and cleats as well. This main sheet plinth I think really works really well. It's a standard feature now on this size boat. Breaks up this cockpit but allows access each side of it. And uh, yeah, it's really easy to control that and trim that main. But you see the step down from here uh, into this deep protected cockpit area. Really, really nice, especially in inclement weather like we've had today. This one has a sort of three quarter height spray hood to protect this area. But you can see up against these combings here, it's really, really nice place to sit. You've got room for about eight people around this table it's fairly short but nice and wide and chunky a uh, bit of stowage in there as well presumably you can have a fridge in that and then you can go down into a nice warm inviting interior so it's not really what I would call an inviting night but this has really impressed me the feeling you get as you descend into this boat and we'll show you what it's like under sail and in daylight and stuff but we've just had nine of us around this saloon area and it's really inviting calm contemporary and cozy as well heaters on really nice mood lighting and um yeah full marks for design and finish quality it's superb 
So as they have for many years now, Contest have used Wetzel's Brown for design the interior. And I think they've done a pretty fabulous job here, really. The main things to point out on this interior. It's a three cabin, two heads format. And when you choose the 49 over the 50, you get these twin aft cabins, rather than obviously an aft master suite and a forward owner's cabin. And why would you do that? Well, there's two main reasons. One, there are no cheap seats in the cabins, as in, this owner has two kids, neither is going to be squabbling over the aft cabin because that's you got a twin that side, they join into double, same the other side will go in there. They're really good sized cabins. You get an and you get an aft uh, a tender garage for a proper dinghy. Otherwise, the main things I wanted to point out really are the finish quality, superb. Uh, the inviting aspect, which we're hoping we're seeing now, but also the benefit of a raised saloon format like this. So they've got the sight lines just right, I think. You're looking out through these coach roof windows, plenty of natural light during the day, and when you're seated through the hull windows, and the hull windows are big on this. You may have noticed from the outside, the cabin windows are a different height to these the saloon windows and that's for a reason so when you're seated you're looking at a horizon line and they're big as well and the other thing is really um that gives you this two you'll notice where my feet are here there's two steps down going forward going aft it's quite a nice raised saloon and that means you've got space below it there's 700 liters of fuel 700 liters of water tanks are below central where they want to be in the boat and we'll have a look we'll pull up the floorboards and have a look at that and the engineering space as well the main difference when if you choose the 50 is that this passageway at the moment goes through to one of the aft cabins it would go through to the master cabin this one number one is slightly different as well in that it has a much larger nav station area so normally this up to about here would be the shower compartment. The owner of this elected not to have a, just have a heads there and a much larger desk nav, nav station area there. But as you can see, yeah, two steps down. So starting with a galley here, good format in that it's a, you know, a passageway or it's kind of U-shaped galley with the, with the door closed there. You've got the microwave induction cooking as standard. What you can't, this is, um, I should also point out owner choice on the faux wood Corian work surfaces, but uh, they're all around work surfaces, whether they're wood or Corian, there's integrated grips in there and in the fiddles itself. So deeply fiddled work surfaces, big deep sink in there, a little narrow on this side uh, and a good work surface here. Three burner GNE bass cooking, and again, deep stowage below there with an extra drawer above it as well. Cut the drawer above and then more raised stowage above here as well. So stowage wise is pretty good because those are deep going outboard as well. And then you have your refrigeration space further aft with a big drawer freezer below that. And then there's a narrow hatch out into the cockpit itself and then when you look below this wide sink with a small inside inboard one there there is access into the engine bay we'll have a look at the main engine access uh, from the other side and then another couple of lockers below with a bin below there these are stowed in this format but they'll slide to join that table so you get a big day bed area if you want it. There's a TV that lifts up from behind there. So you get a, yeah, a big day bed area. You could join this table with these puff style seats on there as well. 
Just wanted to point out a few of the features I really like here on, we've mentioned the raised saloon and the, the tankage that gives you below, but this showing this obviously with the table raised rather than the coffee position it's been, so that flips over and lowers. But it's the, the neat stowage solutions here which befit the design I really like. So between uh, the galley and the saloon area, what everyone loves now, an espresso with all your pods built in there as well. Space above as well. And then obviously got long deep drawers for, for glasses and stowage there. So it's, it's where you need it to be between the two. And then I say where there is usable stowage, it's easy to access. So because you have the tanks under the sole, all below these salute seating, including under these um, puff seats as well, there's stowage, so there's life jacket stowage in there. And then these lift on struts for easy access uh, to, for stuff you're using on a daily basis. And then the best feature on the boat, and this is something this ribbed design works really well with having these vertical sluts. Is what you're not seeing now is the, the thing I like the most, and that is this tall cupboard stroke wet hanging locker. I mean, that we use this all the time, and there's plenty of hanging space there. There's a shelf there, and there's more hanging space below, and it's got a heated duct in there as well, so kit will dry out in here. Moving forward into the forward cabin, same again in here. There's stowage throughout the cabin, but this berth lifts at the aft end on struts. So, yeah, this stowage part here is at the moment full. It's got some tools and stuff in it, but, you, you know, whatever you put your luggage in there or whatever but then the midsection has services in there as well but this makes it easy to get at them so you've got your um, reverse aircon with basto in there you've got your high selden hydraulic power pack you've got your breaker box and this is the c zone um, manual fuses there so you've got your 10 amps fuses you can get at rather than just having the digital switching there's some redundancy there as well and you'll probably notice each side, these lee cloths. So you tie those up on the hooks and they keep you in. The actual mattress itself is split in half, so you can split each berth in half and that'll keep you in place. And then the best bit about here, being on this headboard, lighting's really nice here, but you've got these dual hatches. So you've sat here as your owner, reading your book, looking up at that nice tool rig. It's a good view, which we'll try and show you now through the power of photography. What you can't see with this mood lighting on is man of natural light, but maybe you can appreciate it. We'll show it in the light, in the daylight anyway, but big opening hatch there, butterfly style opening hatches there for ventilation. And then those two big hole, hole ports there, uh, plenty, plenty of natural light. Then you have this vanity desk area here, sort of shallow opening bit there and a big mirror. That's your only, hanging space in here which is good um but i think once you, you yeah you probably want to be able to put your suitcase or another one would be nice um so it's it's a good amount of space but uh won't be as generous as on an aft owner's cabin the aft area of this berth that's beautifully made up at the moment and then as mentioned this owner's gone for an extra large desk area i would not be surprised if that happens quite a lot more with more and more people working from their boats as well having a little office area makes a lot of sense but as a chart table format good too you've got a swivel swivel seat here huge great lift top desk look at that it's quite neat as well isn't it you've got your battery switches in there uh, and then plenty of space on this carbon panel for your instruments. Contests work with C-Zone and Master Vault uh, as standard, so you get this lovely touchscreen display, but redundancy is the, is the um, name of the game as well. So all of the fuses are, uh, there are manual fuses as well, and there's access to all the wiring as well. Look at that behind, really nicely done. And moving off, we'll look in the engine room properly, but you have a 
in this format, just a heads area here, which works well as a day heads, but it's a shared heads between these two aft cabins. So this, just the heads there, and there is a shower in there as well. And these aft cabins, yeah, identical. And this is, for me, really one of the real pros of this boat. That is significant beam there to be able to get a twin or a double. And when I say a twin or a double, it really is. And this is for both cabins because they are identical. So that just lifts up. If I do that, now you'll see the rail there. And that means that allows this berth to slide in next to that one. So whether you're a couple or, or kids or to, uh, you know, regatta sailing or whatever, then the, the, the layout of this cabin could be suited to adapt. And obviously behind here is the watertight bulkhead to the tender garage, massive hull windows again. That's where the headroom reduces just below standing head right. But, but before here, the, you've got a good seven foot of headroom. Very impressive, good size, hanging wardrobes in there as well. But nicely done here with these blinds and you've got the mozzie nets that come over here. All the blackout blinds as well, as I say, opens both sides. Really nice ambient lighting throughout here and USB chargers and switches and stuff. Got ventilation fan as well. And then a, a small double locker with shelves in on this side as well. Which leaves the heads and shower compartment in here. This has a washer dryer in on this side, a good size hatch above for ventilation and good amount of stowage in there as well. And yes, those who have watched plenty of my videos before know I like a heated tower. It's an option, goes there. This is with the galley floorboards lifted so you can see your water pumps here this is your your plumbing section really so water pumps and filters under there uh, taking the steps up there so you can see a couple of the raw water inlets and then you have uh, the fuel filter for the generator and really neat manifolds there for it as well and there's your gen set under the companionway steps with those lifted these I've kept on because basically that's just tanks. It's just the top of the tanks and the batteries under there. Uh, because you have these two big steps up there, you can you pre start to appreciate uh, the amount of space that is under this saloon floor. And then what's slightly different with this one is because this owner's got a larger nav station area, uh, the nav seat's in a different spot, but that is under here. Uh, the twin fuel filters for the engine as well. You can see those hoses going through that manifold section further aft and you get a peer into there in a nice deep bilge area. And then it's two steps down going aft and this is the three quarter height engine room door. Uh, into, yeah, so three quarter height engine room door into this engine room with the Yanmar sail drive in here. And you've got the water filters up here and otherwise really it's ducting, exhaust systems, power module, uh, and there's the, the aft end of the, of the generator under there as well. So that is, I mean, it's, I can easily get in here, and if I do, at the aft end of the sail drive, there's the leg. Um, that's the panel from that galley section I was talking about, but I'm full standing headroom in here, so there's plenty of space and light to work around the systems. Uh, and get it servicing in here as well. So that's Den Helder in there. We've come over from the island of Texel. And yeah, a bit about the comfort really of sailing it and the confidence I was talking about the quietness inside, the stiffness of the boat, that comes from the construction. So it's a mid, mid to heavy displacement boat, talking 23 tons basically. And um, it's all 
The vacuum infused vinylester they use the same fibers in the structure. It's all totally Lloyd's approved as well, the building of it. And that means that using the same fibers and resin through the boat, they can vacuum infuse it in one shot. So basically they build the hull and then put all, put all of the um, furniture, put all of the carpentry inside of it before putting the deck in. So it's a very, very stiff structure once it comes out of the mold. You feel it, you feel it on the water without that noise, nice, stiff, solid motion going through the waves. We're just waiting to get back in here at Den Helder. Two days aboard, it's been an enjoyable trip. Slight shame about the weather, but it's got me thinking about this this Contest 49 CS and those lucky enough to be in the, the market for a 50 foot luxury cruiser, there is some really good options, but they're all typically center cockpits, which makes this a clever decision by this Dutch yard to offer the same hull, a completely different accommodation layout as the 50 with an aft owner suite or this, the 49 CS with uh, the forward owner suite and the aft helms. It really gives you that choice to make, and uh, it, yeah, it's, it's a nice decision to make. Eight of their buyers so far have gone for the 50, and four have gone for this uh, 49 CS with the forward master and the aft helms. And I think it's enjoyable to sail in this format. I get it. As I say, I'll never have that choice to make, but some lucky people will. Hope you've enjoyed the tour and the sail with us. See you next time. Thank you.